You take Joe Biden, you mix him up with the socialist squad with a little bit of Nancy Pelosi sprinkled in there and a whole bunch of Chuck Schumer from the Senate, and this is what you have. You have a train wreck. You have inflation. You have this disaster of economic policy that's getting nothing but worse. So let's go to now to Ted Cruz uh, speaking about what's happening with Joe Biden in charge. Moments ago, it was a terrific interview, folks. You want to watch this interview. I spoke for a while with a very charming Texas senator named Ted Cruz about all these problems that Brian Kilmeade couldn't solve. <laughs> there is something? All right, we welcome back to the show Texas Senator uh, Ted Cruz. Senator Cruz, great to see you, sir. Thanks for coming back on. Um, I've got a whole laundry list of things for you, as always. But, right. you know, I don't know if you saw it this morning, the front page of the New York Post um, about Joe Biden's train wreck. It's a fabulous cover, as so many postcards. I talked about it with our Brian Kilmeade on the first segment, and it lists out a whole bunch of things, you know, gasoline prices and um, uh, the border crisis and Title 42 and baby formula crisis and inflation and the like. But I just wanted to start generically with you. You're a great thinker. I mean, isn't this really the total collapse of the so-called progressive agenda? What Newt Gingrich calls, you know, big government socialism. Government runs everything, including this woke culture, which is part of the progressive agenda that people are rebelling about. I mean, in basically 18 months, sir, isn't that really what's going on here? Yeah, Larry, I think that's exactly right. Uh, you know, normally in a Democratic administration, you have some checks and balances within the Democratic Party. You have the liberals among the Democrats, but you have some centrist or moderate Democrats who push back. What, what is really unprecedented about the Biden White House and about Schumer and Pelosi is they have entirely handed their agenda over to the radical left. It is the hard left socialist. It's the Bernie Sanders, the AOCs, the Elizabeth Warrens who, who are driving the agenda. And, and that Andy. has proven to be an... Okay, now, people, I, the reason I want to parse this is I want you to recognize something. You, you'll hear me use terms like uh, uh, progressives or uh, socialist or uh, hardcore leftists or, you know, uh, big government uh, folk. I bring this up because the, historically progressives were the ones about 100 and some years ago, uh, both Democrats and Republicans, who were really calling for a change in how things had been done from, let's say, the founding of our, our federal constitutional republic up till about... Uh, roughly 1913 when Woodrow Wilson came into power. I know Ted, uh, T Teddy Roosevelt was a part of that too, but it really exploded under the Democrat um, uh, uh, Woodrow Wilson. Progressivism ultimately believes that the function of the government is to provide stuff. I'm, ge I'm general, I'm simplifying for the sake of time, but let's just go progressivism means to progress, the government's got to step in, be a heck of a lot more involved, uh, and it has, that means it has to grow, expand, and spend. More social programs, more spending. Whereas the mode of operation between 1787 or 1791 with the ratification of the Bill of Rights until 1913, generally speaking, the government, the federal government's role was to be limited at certain spheres of activities as a central government entity. And it was to let the states and the localities, and municipalities, cities, and we the people, sovereign people, leave them alone for the most part. That changed with the progressives. Progressives says, no, the central government, the federal government, uh, can have a much, much bigger role. The founding fathers, their, their emphasis on a you know, separation of powers, uh, that, 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 we, we, don't, we don't care for that too much. You can't get enough things done. That the central government can't get enough things done. So if we have to have a more, uh, a larger administrative bureaucratic state to supersede the powers of, of Article I, which, which would lay at the seat of the Congress, then so be it. And you can see this Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson, who actually studied a British a parliamentary uh, democracy, where he saw that the prime minister, uh, the central government, had a lot more uh, power at a lot quicker pace. And so you'll see that Woodrow Wilson, I, I, I cover this in my book, by the way, I do cover this in my book, Mobocracy. 
uh, where you'll see that then, then the, the progressives, the progressives of, say, England, but there's also the progressives of America, say, Uncle Sam, federal government, do more, lots more, spend more, lots more, more programs, more centralization. Thank you for watching The Jake Jacob Show. If you want to see more, go to Jake Jacob Show at Rumble, Jake Jacob Show at Rumble, or hit the link below. And by the way, I love it when you make comments. In fact, a lot of times I like to read your comments live uh, during the show. And also, it helps a lot if you subscribe, so please subscribe. So until we meet again, happy trails to you.